Hello, I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies. That'll bring you a quick update. Doing the last one I did, I wound up cracking this all the way down. I got it almost all the way, and I pounded it and brought it in. Farther, this is what kept happening, it kept doing this. And she pooched out here and popped out there. Come to find out, these cans here that have this kind of a ridge that fit inside these others, made out of a little bit different material. Not good, not very strong, they wind up doing this every time, but that's okay, I get to use these for something else. These ones here, if you look at the difference in the color of these, you can see this is a much thinner wall and these are a lot harder. This is the one that I broke the vise with. Luckily, from here all the way around, leaving a spot like this was still sticking up, but it didn't pooch out. And when I hit that vise, I slammed it with my hand and got her down. So this one's finished. A little bit taller than I wanted before. It's going, this extends up one and one eighth inch that means uh about a half inch lobe on my cam is going to be what i'm using half, start here halfway half inch up and a half inch down this was the first one we used this one doesn't come up very hard it's probably be a little faster machine won't have as much torque as the other one anyway that's up to that this is what I plan on using for a piston on these. If you'll notice, these brass tubes have very little friction. They're highly polished. And I also have another tube right out here. Let's get that stuck there. Ooh. Spin like a bearing almost. These are very fine, very thin walled. You'll notice here, you can almost not tell the difference in the sizes of them. I keep these clean, I keep them in my sock drawer, and I keep them wrapped up. Uh, can't read the size on that one. The size on this one, 1930 seconds. So there's like a 30 second of an inch difference on each of them. And uh, I think this one here was 18.30 seconds. But these are what I normally use on my Sterling engines. There are other... Oops, I done got oil on it. A little bit of oil will slow it right on down. And they don't spin as good as they did. I clean these up with some alcohol, and then I'll put them in the machine. We'll show you how to do that. The next thing I want to show you is, like I said, this one... This can here is still useful. It looks like I got a burr up there. This indents and fits right in. This is what's going to be holding some of our framework. Notice that sits right inside there and spins like that. But to cool the top side, this would be a layer between this and this, which would not dissipate the heat. So we'll have to cut here without warping or denting this and go ahead and put some silicon all the way around here and seal it on down. Notice how that spins perfect. You know we got dead center. But it's not going to be a spinning deal. When we cut this and epoxy it or put the silicone seal on it, and it's going to leave the middle open here. And I'm going to put a tube that comes up in the middle here to keep water out of the inside. You do not want water inside here or steam will build up. And either we can take the piston off the side or we can take it real close to this coming up here and keep our cam uh, cam lobes pretty close to each other. Now I'm going to show you on the other Sterling engine that I baked. I went ahead and broke everything loose so we can show you how it works and what we're fixing to do. Okay, this is the other machine. I wound up taking all of this loose so you can see how I have it made. Uh, keep it in the camera view. Actually, we don't need this stand. This comes out. I hope I don't got those sit there. No, I think I cleaned it up. You see inside there is the other tube. We'll poke just one small hole and then epoxy it down straight. This right here, see how it's flexible? That's nothing but aluminum foil tape. And that's epoxy down to the bottom so it doesn't uh, 
let anything inside the displacer. On this one, I got a real fine, thin piece of brass rod, but you notice it moves around like this because I made a ring up in the top. We'll be showing you that. But these, I just twisted these around another piece of coat hanger, and then when it f opened up a little bit, it made it nice and loose. It's sloppy. That's okay. These, I bent like this, and here's the other one. If you look down in the bottom, it's almost kind of clear. This is what I this is what I do with the piston. I make a round hook around it, around each other, and I make these two linkage parts. This right here is a piece of like coffee stir, but actually this one came off of a Q-tip. The little plastic tube between. You shove them up inside, and you this makes a great adjuster. See, they're still stout, and then you put a drop of super glue when you get the, your stroke adjusted to the height that you want it to be, and the same thing on the other. These little pieces right here where my fingernail is, these are, are pieces of a pen filling. After the ink goes down so far, you just clip them off at different lengths. And you just slide them down here and that keeps this from going sideways. And the same thing over here. I got one that runs back and forth here that the, uh, this little hook under the splicer, I pull it up and hook it. And I'm good. But these two will set down. And then you can put a flywheel on. This machine here ran, ran close to a thousand RPM when I didn't have a blade on it. Uh, I just had two paper plates on the side. It kind of looked like a little wishing well. <laughs> but anyway, we'll get right back and we'll start building all this stuff. See here, I made a small hole in the middle and I cut with the nippers around and around. Very thin strips so as not to bend the bottom. And when I got it to about that far, I went ahead and used this angle grinder with a small wheel and just work my way around till I got a perfect edge. Notice I left this part that hooks around like this because that's where my wire is going to go when I when I build my thing coming up here and the inside is open the epoxy will take care of the rest of this here when it sets down right there. And you have to cut your circles to the left on the bottom of this to the left definitely wear gloves. These are very sharp pieces here. The way I do this is I lean the bottle a little bit this way and let the flat part of the nozzle form it so it does a nice smooth job. A lot neater. Let this dry for about four minutes and then we press this down all the way on and it ought to do fine. I think if I uh, get some on both surfaces, probably won't hurt. Shoot, that feels real good. I think it'll stick on both deals and dry very well. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it like that. Then we're going to continue building the inside. We're going to bend this and put a small hook in the end here and then mount the rest of the linkage as we figure out well, how, how long that needs to be according to the cam and everything. This is a little with a one and an eighth inches of air inside. 